Hello, and welcome to another episode of Film Freaks with a Z, the podcast all about movies. Each episode is about a single movie, and we will talk about that in a little bit. But first, I always got to invite the people, the listeners, to input their film recommendations. Uh, We have a vote, which is during Tay's episode, so if you want to get your movie in, in for the next vote... Do it now. We take it on YouTube uh, in the chat in the in the comments section of each episode. We take it in the Discord, the Ferret Nation Discord, in the movie stuff section. We take it in email, ff.filmfruitsazia at the end at gmail.com. Or just tell us what movie you want and we will put it on the list. Um, we will reveal the winner for this for the next episode at the end of this episode. So without further ado, let's introduce ourselves so we can get there. I am Ben Stiller in a tracksuit, and I'm here with <laughs> the Royal Waffles. Hello, Tay. Tay? Oops, I forgot I muted myself for your intro. <laughs> I was like, "Did you guys say I'm muted?" <laughs> no, it was me. I- I'm Tay Tenenbaum. We were just so flabbergasted by your name. We loved yeah. it so much. Yes. <laughs> uh, say I your name again, made Tay. Up a good... Tay Tenenbaum. And I am Tay's adopted brother, Callis Tenenbaum. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's a whole family. Uh, I've always wanted an adopted brother. <laughs> but would you want to kiss your adopted brother? No. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Oh, or would sad. I? Sad. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so last episode, Tay was sick with COVID. This episode, Callis took a vacation and came back sick. How you feeling, Callis? <laughs> Thankfully, I'm doing a lot better now. So, yeah, back to 100%. Can you go anywhere nowadays Good. without getting sick? I don't I guess not. Can. No. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, I got COVID because I traveled up to family for the holidays. So, so it's a family fault. It well, Calis been. saw family yeah. too. So, yeah, just yeah. here's a tip for everyone out there don't go see your family. You'll <laughs> die. <laughs> yeah. I either, like I said, it was either from the family or, you know, because I took a, we had a, or we flew up there. So, you know, airplanes. Avoid them. Uh, it's not like 200 family members. So, <laughs> Speaking of family, Callus, introduce the yeah. movie for us. Sure thing. So this time around, I decided to finish off our Wes Anderson quartet by recommending The Royal Tenenbaums. I mean, I don't know if they say quartet. We'll see what Yemi picks after the next movie. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways... <laughs> Yeah, The Royal Tenenbaums, written and directed by Wes Anderson. It stars Gene Hackman, Gwyneth Paltrow, Angelica Houston, Ben Stiller, Luke Wilson, Owen Wilson, Bill Murray, Denny Glover, Seymour Castle, Kumar Palana, many more. And it was narrated by Alec Baldwin. A quick synopsis of the movie is, The eccentric members of a dysfunctional family reluctantly gather under the same roof for various reasons. So, I will start off the conversation by asking, uh, what is everyone's favorite Tenenbaum? (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, my name, you know, I I, I like the, I like Ben Stiller's character. Yeah, I would say, like, if we're looking at it as people, like, that I would get along (laughs) with, yeah, Ben Stiller's character, he seemed the most grounded and normal, (laughs) and, like, I would, yeah, okay, I could... I, can... I, I kind of found him the most annoying because <laughs> he's like so always like complaining and has like I don't know like he's more also... than uh, Owen Wilson's character. I was saying, he was only complaining <laughs> about his dad and yeah. and I get that his dad's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's something we can get into later, but uh... I'm sorry for your loss. Your mother was terribly attractive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. I, I would probably say my favorite Tenon Bomb was. I'm just probably the mom. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the mom was great too. Yeah, yeah. she was. Eth- Ethelene. But she technically w- was an attendant bomb. Oh, yeah, true. She just became one through marriage. Yeah, and then divorced, so. Right at the end, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right at the end, but. 
technically took them, took them a while. Technically earlier than that. They were separated, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing. But not separated enough for uh Royal to send the, his uh stooge after them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my favorite Tenenbaum was uh, Pagoda. <laughs> oh, yeah. I do like, I mean, when he stabs Gene Hackman. Yeah, that was again. <laughs> twice, he, to- he stabbed yeah. him twice. Yeah. <laughs> That's the last time you'll stab me. And like, immediately helps him after stabbing him. <laughs> yeah, as, he, as is his way. <laughs> So who who was everyone's least favorite <clears throat> tenant bum? Mm. Mm. I think Cal was already answered that one. <laughs> well, well, let's let's let him put words out out of his mouth. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll go later. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe it's just because I don't like Gwyneth Paltrow, but I did not like Margaret Margaret Margot. Mm. What's her yeah, name? She... Margot. Margot. I don't know. Margot. Margot. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she was probably my least favorite as well. Um, yeah. That one or uh, uh, the Houston, who played, uh, what did Houston play? Etheron? Etheline? Etheline, the mom. Etheline, yeah. Oh, so you didn't like the mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay, then. <laughs> So um, is is Eli Cash? Do, do we want to say he's a tenant bum since like he's always with the family? Kind of. That's how they kind of set it up. They kind of set it up as like he's kind of a part of the family, but he's not. Yeah. He's is he not because killing the dog. No dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I guess uh, for my least favorite, I I say it's a tie between Chas and Margot. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> Chaz was Luke Wilson's character. No, ben Chaz was Stiller. Ben Stiller. Oh, okay. Luke Wilson was Richie. Luke, uh, Richie. Oh, that's right. Richie, that's right. Yeah. yeah, he was fine. He didn't do anything like super hateable. Yeah. <laughs> what do you guys think? Of <laughs> but he didn't do anything like super like, oh, yeah, this guy's cool. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah, he was there. <laughs> Which I think sums up Luke Wilson's career. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, being the, uh, you know, younger brother of Owen Wilson, it, it was yeah. a little bit weird in this movie just because they do look similar, especially once he shaves his head. Yeah. I'm like, damn, you can definitely tell is the he, resemblance now. Is he younger? Or is, I thought we thought he was older. No, he's younger. Oh, okay. And like, says, it says it right on his IMDb. <laughs> yeah. okay. I'm not saying that like I knew. I just was I was reading his IMDb <laughs> for this. And I like Luke Wilson, but, um, but yeah. But yeah, for the maybe maybe they're just kind of like hinting at like, oh, maybe Owen Wilson's character was was actually a uh, royal Tenenbaum, you know, uh, infidelity incident, you know. Yeah, maybe. I mean, they why else? That, yeah. Why else would they cast you know Owen and Luke Wilson in the same movie and not make them family? You know. Well, it's because it's a Wes Anderson movie, and he loves the Wilson brothers. <laughs> yeah, and also he doesn't like to make sense. He likes to avert expectations. What Avert is that the right word? a secret plan. Sub- subvert expectations. <laughs> That's the right word. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so I have a question there. for you guys. Did Not did right. anyone notice? Uh, I mean, this was one of Wes Anderson's earlier movies, like his second movie, I believe. Uh, but did anyone notice any of his future traits he has in every movie that was not in this movie? Mm. There's definitely the zoom in and zoom out in this one. I would say like the um, the quick dialogue, quick dialogue, um, like the color was there, like everything was bright and vibrant. Like, I don't know if that's like a trait. I don't know if you would say. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, you could, yeah, that's his filming him, style, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or his like every style. all the colors stood out, especially the uh, jump sh- or not jumpsuit, uh, sweatsuit. I guess you say the tracksuits. Yeah, tracksuit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's better. It I mean, was it definitely no, felt it felt more. I mean, it did it did feel like a Wes Anderson movie more than the Life Aquatic. I'll, I'll yeah, say oh that. yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. No one got punched in the face. 
Yeah, I guess that's the if one thing. Someone got stabbed. <laughs> yeah, they yeah, got stabbed. Seven. But there's always just the quick shot of someone getting punched in the face, and no one got punched yeah. in the face in this one, even <laughs> though there was lots of people who deserve to be punched in the face. He went yes, from stabbing to punching. <laughs> I think a lot of people that the... uh, could have been stabbed. Uh, I mean, punched. He go life from stabbing to punching or punching to this. stabbing? He went to punching. Yeah. Because Life Aquatic came out after this, so yeah, yeah. Uh, Grand Budapest that came out yeah. after too. But like, yeah, Owen well, Wilson's like, yeah, character Grand was twenty sixteen. Yeah, that was a much later. Fourteen, twenty fourteen. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, like Owen Wilson's character definitely did deserve to be punched in the face. Royal at one point probably deserved to be punched in the face. I mean, he got stabbed, so I guess you know he he got his comeuppance. But <laughs> Margot deserved <laughs> to be punched in the face. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I don't know if I would well. say that, but like <laughs> I didn't like her, but I wouldn't say like she was straight up evil. I mean, she was an adulterer, but <laughs> so was Royal. Did the kids deserve to be punched in the face? No, the no. kids definitely did not deserve. <laughs> no, to be I, I thought the kids were fine. Like the child acting was was pretty good in this movie. Uh, they they yeah. cast good good kids for both the younger versions of the Tana bombs. And uh, the the Ben Stiller's kids. Yeah. yeah. Are they actually they're Ben they're Stiller's gonna... kids, though? Do you think? They're not actually his kids. I don't know. <laughs> I was just wondering, did he think that they would? Because his wife was in the movie. I was afraid that uh, the kids are going to start like adapting like Ben Stiller's uh, kind of goofiness. I was mm-hmm. like, oh gosh, don't let that happen. But, well, yeah, I mean, they this... say saying throughout the movie. Well, I mean, Ben Stiller didn't really. I mean, he wasn't really himself, as you could you could say. Like he wasn't like the Zoolander Ben Stiller or whatever. I mean, he was definitely more of a character actor in this one than just being, you know, like a goofy sidekick or main yeah. character right so you, I, I wouldn't even say that like his kids were trying to emulate what ben stiller or what you know whatever I, I i feel like ben stiller just he played a character just like everyone was playing a character i guess the only person who i really felt like was just playing themselves was owen wilson at this point yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, maybe. because everyone else seemed to be doing a great job of like exuding the traits that their character was exhibiting yeah and owen wilson was just being himself <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So it's it's nice, uh, you know, it's nice when directors can get, you know, actors to change up their performance. You know, you think about Jim Carrey and the um, the Eternal Sunshine yeah. of, a, yeah. of a spotless the Truman mind. Show. Yeah, Truman Show as well. You know, like he, he and the Grinch, <laughs> the number twenty three. Yeah. Oh God. The number twenty three <laughs> was so bad. You yeah. know, it came out on my birthday. This started oh, as a compliment to Jim Carrey and. <laughs> <laughs> and I but, regretted seeing it. Yeah, I'm glad that they didn't just have Jim Goofy, uh, not Jim Carrey, uh, Goofy Ben Stiller in this movie. I, I like that yeah, he was yeah. actually playing a character, and he did yeah. a great job with that. Like, yeah, sure, there were still like some of those Ben Stiller moments, like yeah, you know, kind of kind of goofy stuff. But it wasn't like 100 percent Ben Stiller. <laughs> I do like in the it's like one of the final, not the last scenes, but like when everyone's kind of you know made up and whatever. You see um, Royal and, and Ben's kids on the garbage truck again, and then he suddenly just pops out from behind, and he totally just gave like a Zoolander face in that scene where he's just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Zoolander came out after this, so. So I guess maybe in Zoolander, he was giving a Zoolander. happy Tenenbaum maybe, face. <laughs> yeah, maybe his, maybe his character in Zoolander is just Tenenbaum. <laughs> Without yeah, the kids, yeah. <laughs> or before the kids, maybe. <laughs> Although they did say that he was like a child prodigy genius with the Dal- Dalmatian mice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so definitely not Zoolander. <laughs> or maybe that was his alter ego. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Where? <laughs> um, yeah, wh- I mean, what did you think of uh, how the movie... Uh, I mean, it, it kind of showed how all the kids were practically geniuses at a young age and how uh, adulthood mm-hmm. kind of smacked him in the face. What did you guys think of that whole con- uh, plot in the movie? Yeah, I mean, I think it was really, you know, more realistic than not, like, it happens to a lot of, you know, child, I mean, even just, like, child actors and stuff where they're like, oh, they're so good, and then they get burned out and just, you know, I agree. Yeah. Their life. Yeah, there's like a lot of um. I feel like 
imitation tours like child actors or like people that kids that grew up um like in certain environments to where like eyes were always on them and kind of like scarred them as they grew up and you know you see the family how messed up they were like when they're all adults and stuff i feel like that's uh more or less accurate yeah i think it, they did a good job of just kind of like showing how each of the kids kind of fell out of the thing that they were quote unquote famous for and um you know like like uh um, Richie was like he stopped playing tennis, and Margot stopped writing plays, and um, Ch- Chaz just did not do anything related to. I mean, I guess I guess he was like teaching his kids like stuff, but he didn't do anything related to like inventing or anything like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think he just was. I mean, would he become like an accountant or something? I think Which so. he had that skill as a kid. I think. But yeah, I guess he's the only one who kind of utilized his childhood skill in the in the future. Yeah. I also like how they get the whole family back together. Like I know Royal kind of sets it up with with his heart attack, but everyone kind of comes back to the house naturally instead of being like, you know, because like Ben Stiller comes in because he doesn't think that his house is safe enough. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then Margot comes back because she's having problems with um, home life with uh, Bill Murray and then Richie comes back because he hears Margo's back. <laughs> and then Royal just shows up and he's like, I'm dying. And they're like, well, we're already here. I guess you might as well. You know. Yeah. I do find it weird. I mean, I guess we'll, we'll jump. I'm jumping again to the end. Um, so at the funeral for Royal, it's stuff like. Spoiler. I get, yeah, he does eventually die. <laughs> um, but yeah, like um, Bill Murray's back and stuff. And I'm just like, I mean, I guess but like he wasn't really part of bill murray's like or part of royal's life because like shortly after he got married you know royal was kicked out of the family basically so it's like why would he be there because <laughs> he's not with margo anymore i hope yeah he's just coaching that kid now or doing tests yeah. on that kid or whatever <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe so wait, he felt obliged this... to go because of the events two years prior or whatever maybe I was confused with that kid. So it's not his kid, and he's just the kid's just always with him. Yeah, it's just a like a test kid. That he runs <laughs> test tests on. A test kid. Well, because I think the kid was like so extraordinarily stupid that he was like running tests on him or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, some kind of like new condition. <laughs> so. But somehow very sharp hearing. Hearing. Very right. sharp hearing. <laughs> Wait, I'm colorblind. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> but no, I li- I really like the um, like this is one of the things that uh, Wes Anderson does best, and like just navigating around so many different characters and all these complex relationships. So I really enjoyed seeing them, you know, come back together and just like how each one of them interacted with each other. So it's always, uh, always very interesting the way he does it. I agree. Yeah, there was a lot yeah. of um, the writing was great in the movie. You know, uh, it felt very natural when the characters were talking to each other. Um, I liked all the little quirky things that he put in there, like kind of related to past and present. You know, um, a lot of it had to do with Margot, like smoking and running away and all that stuff. And I like that you finally find out why, she, where she ran away to, and yeah. how she <laughs> lost her finger. It's like yeah. no one even ever asked her, and this kid's just like, "So how'd you do it?" Oh, you know, found my family. <laughs> Got my finger chopped off. <laughs> so, one of the more um, crazy scenes in the movie was the one where uh, Richie tries to kill himself with the razor blades. <laughs> um, I would say that that scene, I mean, that struck <laughs> a chord. Like, that was, I'm going to use the word. That was a visceral scene. Visceral. Like that was like I, the, the the camera panning up and the like the water running and he's just laying on the floor and blood's everywhere. Like that was a that was an intense one. I I, I gotta commend Wes Anderson for that because this is something you don't really see in a, in his movies too often is like this really like visceral moment. Um, and the music's playing too, which also is like like a crazy mm. like tie in oh. as well. Like yeah, the music in this movie is all. So- 
so good. Yeah, but yeah, that uh, yeah, that was, the music was really intensified that scene, and yeah, I would agree with you that that moment was very visceral. Did you go? Did you guys think that he was actually gonna die there? No. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't think he was gonna die, but it was still like a moment where, like, yeah, you you can feel that. Yeah, I definitely can feel it, and. No, been around you know people that done that, and it's kind of scary. And yeah, like yeah. Yemi said, it's really it really struck you. I guess on the flip side is, do you think that Royal was was gonna die? Like, did you actually believe that he had, had no, a heart cancer? <laughs> no cancer. No, I did not. <laughs> Stomach cancer, I should say. Neither did anyone else. <laughs> well, I mean, everyone. No, I mean, a lot. Most people. Yeah, did. most people did, except well, for. Family. Uh, Danny Glover's character. He 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 was the, uh, the detective. Yeah. My wife died of stomach cancer. I know what it looks like. This is not it. <laughs> yeah, as soon, as soon as Royal was like eating a hamburger, I was like, okay, I don't I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that's right. And then, you know, Henry Glover confirms that he's like, yeah, you're not supposed to eat cheeseburgers. <laughs> Speaking of uh, Danny Glover's character, um, so I watched this movie with. Uh, Tater, as some of you may know, and she noticed something that uh, I've never noticed before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get a word. Anyways, <laughs> uh, so so you guys know how uh, Henry is with Ethelene, and uh, Royal Tenenbaum wants her back. So they're basically fighting over her. Did anyone notice that Henry Sherman is always wearing a royal blue suit? Mm. I did not. I, did not. I noticed the suit color, but I did not know it was called <laughs> royal blue. Coincidence or on purpose? Maybe. <laughs> maybe just, yeah, maybe just maybe just a little bit of coincidence in there, or not. So yeah, she's having yeah. to choose between two different royals. <laughs> this is like something. How, uh, um, the fam- that Ben Stiller's family had to wear the red track suits. Mm-hmm. Which were, that was, just so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was so odd for them to like always be in the tracksuits. <laughs> yeah, and that's like the one thing I do remember most about like because this is my first time seeing this movie, and I just remember when it first came out and you know seeing it later on, which is always like, what is with the red jumpsuits? <laughs> It's not, because they're always moving, tra- I guess, and, yeah. and, the, and the track suits uh, they allow for your your skin to breathe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I guess I so think I like it's something similar, like in the Life Aquatic, where they're all always wearing the red hats. But I liked the red hats, and I did not like the red jumpsuits. <laughs> Maybe it's just bias because. Um... William Defoe isn't in the movie. If he was wearing the tracksuit, I bet you'd like it. Mm. <laughs> you know what? He he would make it work. <laughs> well, that's that's true. That's true. <laughs> that is so true. Yeah, William uh... Defoe wasn't in it. Yeah, so odd. <laughs> well, they hadn't made that connection yet. Uh, Wes Anderson and Mr. Defoe. Hmm. Yeah, I believe The Life Aquatic was the first movie that Defoe was in. That was Wes Anderson. Yeah, which I mean, yeah, that's, that's the third movie. So yeah, and after that, he's in like every opening. Pretty much. That's where Wes Anderson and Willem Defoe fell in love. Yeah, <laughs> so sweet. It's a little three way between him and Bill Murray. Oh yeah. <laughs> Who wouldn't want that? <laughs> Dream come true. But um, how, what is everyone's opinion of like the uh, the overall custom design and set design and like the way everything looks in the movie? It was great, bright, beautiful, and pretty. Yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah, it feels like the time period that it's set in. Yeah, which actually, it's I mean, it's set in the like in two thousand, <laughs> which is weird because it does seem a little more Older? in the past. Yeah, but. Um, well, the building. I mean, I would say that it's like old the building for sure. Yeah, like the yeah. old buildings and stuff like that. Kind of how everything that. was so tight and like intact. 
like like uh the last scene you know like where the wedding and uh bill ben stiller is chasing um uh why can't i uh really? owen wilson um and it just like feel like they've been running for hours but you know there was only like a few seconds <laughs> Yeah, I would say the only person who looked like they were up with the times was, um, I mean, really, it was it was Ben Stiller in his tracksuit. Like, I feel like he was the only one that kind of <laughs> looked more modern in two thousand. I mean, even Richie kind of yeah. looked a bit older with the uh, with with his outfit. It's all because of that tracksuit. Yeah, I guess the tracksuit is a must. Um, oh, I had a thought. I just forgot my thought. Um. Well, while you think of that, let's just talk about the relationship between Richie and Margot. Oh, yeah, it's something we should talk about. <laughs> and I believe uh, it was it was it was weird. I mean, like I said, I don't really like Gwyneth Paltrow, um, and like I didn't really like her in this movie either. <laughs> um, I mean, she's but... a very unlikable character here. Yes, yeah, so like yeah. it just kind of compounds on that with the unlikable character and unlikable actress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um yeah. I don't know. Like for me, you know, it's a that's a trope that gets used a lot in like anime and stuff. Where I'm just like Gwyneth Paltrow? Yes, there's always a Gwyneth Paltrow character in anime. Watch some anime, Yemi. Uh, I I've watched <laughs> all of the cyberpunk series. I'm watching One Punch Man. Um, right, really? When I was a kid, I watched all of Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z. Mm, so what about Cowboy Bebop? Like I do watch anime. A lot of anime. <laughs> um, but no, so like, it's always the trope where it's like, I'm in love with my sibling. And I'm just like, like, oh, we're not related by blood because they're my step-sibling or whatever. And it's like, what are you doing, step bro? If, if, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's also a porn trope. But it's just like, yeah. if you grow up with these people, you don't, you see them as your family. You don't, you don't go like, oh, hey, I'm attracted to them. <laughs> like, sure, if you, like, if you met older, like, you were in your teens and your families came together, sure, then, fine. But when you're like, we were basically b- raised completely together for all times. You don't, you don't, it's just, it's just eh. I don't know. I guess not, uh, um, like that in the Marvel movies. Oh, well. oh geez. Anyways, <laughs> I don't know. I guess maybe, um, cause like, aren't there cases where like kids that are like best friends, they grow up and then they end up, you know, falling in love and marry each other and stuff like that. Yes, there is for see sure stuff like that, but I don't know. But it's I guess... I, I, like when it's family, you just it's I don't know. I get I mean there are people who still do sure, but it's just like it's weird because it's just you grew up with them, you they were family. Why? Whatever, whatever. <laughs> it's just a trope that keeps getting used, and it always kind of bugs. That's me. that's how I feel about the whole thing. It's just whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's just another uh, another plot point. <laughs> I, yeah. I do agree. It is weird, and it it uh, like Tay said, like yeah, they're they're raised from kids, but obviously, I mean, Richie's ha- had an infatuation with Margot for a while, and they kind of like, I mean, they did set it up where like yeah, they spent the night in that museum or whatever, and yeah, and you know he lost the tennis match because Margot was uh, there with her um, husband, her husband, her new husband. Yeah, and so it's like. Maybe maybe he needed a little bit of a talking to by his parents or something like that, you know? <laughs> yeah. You can't love Margot. She's practically family. She you, is Owen family. Wilson on the other on the other end. Yeah. <laughs> that one makes more sense. Like, again, friends do fall in love. <laughs> but yeah, family it's just it's it's not likely. <laughs> what about the relationship between uh... Chess and oh, I mean not chess. Uh, between Richie and Eli Cash, they're like supposedly best friends, kind of. Yeah. Well, they they kind of like were best friends, and then seems like something happened. 
Well, then he found out that he slept with Margot. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, speaking of unlikable characters, I mean, Eli was like a a little yeah. bastard the, en- <laughs> the entire movie. <laughs> Killed the dog. Anytime you do that, I hate you on yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think, think that was think intentional, that. like, to make him unlikable. Dog. But the ensuing, like, you know, chase scene and stuff like that, like, you know, the, the movie did need a little bit of action, and I guess that's kind of like the... the, the uh, the big ending, the like, big climax. point climax, yeah, is uh, you know the you know Chaz running after Eli, and then they end up in like the neighbor's yard, and they have the <laughs> you know Royal and them at the knock on the door, and be like, "Hey, are, what are you get into your yard?" <laughs> like, I, I did like that as like a final like big climactic moment. Yeah, and I also like uh, how. Uh, you know, Royal kind of got accepted back into the family without the stigma of him being almost dying, you know? And Mm -hmm. then it's kind of ironic that he still died, like, the same... Like, he had the same time frame of his own death as he would have if he had the cancer. Yeah. (laughs) But, yeah, no, they did... I like um, Topos, you know, who's on the show few weeks back or whatever a <laughs> few shows back you know he said when i told him with this one we were watching he's like oh it's another sh- show where like the main characters are all kind of horrible but you're still rooting for them <laughs> rooting kind for of most of them. yeah <laughs> i was i was rooting for um I, I was rooting for henry the whole time oh yeah me too of course i was like you got this henry <laughs> You go. I guess Harry Henry in a in a way was like the only good character, like the one that <laughs> yeah, like the only like <laughs> decent person. Like yeah. I said, Ben Stiller's wasn't horrible. Like he seemed like a decent enough person. You know, he had had tragedy in his life, lost his wife. Hmm. So yeah, I guess we can talk about more about uh, Ben Stiller's character a little bit now. Um, so I just. I just kind of find it weird how, um, like, yeah, he had, like, a lot of problems with, you know, his dad growing up, and, you know, then the dad abandoned the whole family. So, yeah, he's very angry, rightfully so, at at Royal. Yeah. But it seemed like the one thing they focus on is, like, how he shot a BB gun into his hand when he was a kid, and, like, it's really the <laughs> only thing that was brought up and the only thing that found, like, some kind of resolution. And so it's, like, they focused so much on that one thing only in it's, well don't it's... don't forget that um later in the movie during like the montage like you know royal takes chaz and his kids to all the things that he did with richie back in the when they were mm. children yeah so that that also all gets i mean semi-resolved i guess you could say <laughs> but yeah, the, i think the bb gun in the hand was it was more so like that's the moment with that that chaz knew like oh dad's kind of a a jerk to me why is he such a jerk to me and then he starts noticing you know richie goes off with with royal throughout the you know throughout his entire life and he kind of got left behind a lot of times yeah yeah and uh, like his treatment of margo also was just kind of horrible where he's just like oh well you're adopted so it's not technically your grandma you don't want to go to her grave it's like did she you, you adopted her into the family like at a young age. <laughs> she is family. Why are you treating her this way? Yes, I know she's not the best character, but still, part of that is because of the treatment she was given. Right. <laughs> would you guys be like Ben Stiller and uh, not want your dad be at home, or would you be like, all right, he can stay with us? Uh, I mean, if it was that dad, no, I'd probably be like Ben Stiller, but I have me too. <laughs> Get the hell out of here! Who wants you? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that there was more to it than just like he didn't want him to be at the home. He didn't want the he didn't want him to taint his sons. He didn't want him to, you know, he didn't want to relive the memories of what he did to him. I mean, you know, Ben Stiller's character is obviously living with a lot of trauma, especially because of his wife's passing. So yeah, it's just one more thing that he didn't want on top of everything else going on. kind of uh interesting how the kids uh 
start like being with the not like Ben Stiller, but like Ben Stiller's dad. Like as with the movie royal? goes on. <laughs> You've yeah. written their names already? But, yeah. <laughs> with the uh, royal. Uh and it's kind of cool to see them like their relationship grow, I guess, a little bit. Yeah, it seems to like grow throughout like the in the afternoon. Like he takes them away from from uh Chaz when they're doing like Clean. busy work yeah. Yeah. and it seems like it's just the afternoon he takes them to you know ride the garbage truck see chickens fight or whatever and then <laughs> and then he's like back home by by night <laughs> how was how was royal able to just take the kids and spend all day with them and like ben still did not find out or do anything until like they came back <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, he's he seems to be like so overprotective. Like he would have noticed a lot sooner, mm -hmm. I, I would think. Because, you would uh, think writing reasons. because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what they needed for the story. Yeah, that's, um, <laughs> Hollywood, they need, they need it. I mean, it also might have just been he was working, so he was you know busy with work. Mm. I think Maybe. the kids were supposed to be at school too, so I mm -hmm. guess he didn't really yeah, notice probably. that they, that thing was up until they didn't come home. At the right time. Yeah, probably that. We'll go with that one. That seems right. the most realistic. I'll, I'll accept this. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you you may pass. You may continue. <laughs> you live to see another day. <laughs> I also wonder if um, Royal's interaction with the kids um, inspired like Bill Murray and Owen Wilson in The Life Aquatic, where Royal's like, call me Pop Pop. And they're like, why? <laughs> you know, or what? You know, like, like Bill, like uh, Bill, Bill Murray wanted Owen Wilson's character to call him a certain name. Yeah. Call me Gaddy. <laughs> now that would be weird. <laughs> talk, talk about weird things. That would be. Weird. It'll be you know, fitting for the movie, I guess. Would it be weird for a Wes Anderson movie? No. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you know, in in Grand Budapest Hotel, if the lobby boy came in and and, and the guy was like, "I'm, you call me Daddy," like I would be like, "Okay, this that is cool." <laughs> He's such a young kid. <laughs> well, I mean, Royal with the, the small kids isn't weird. They're two little kids saying, "Call me Daddy" to him. What? <laughs> <laughs> but that didn't actually happen. So yeah, we can scratch that. Anything else you guys want to talk about? What was the significance of the Falcon? Hmm. That's a good question. I have no idea. Because <laughs> right, that's what I was wondering at the end of it, because they, they seem to focus on this Falcon a lot, and he lets it go free, and then it comes, you know, he gets he gets it back. I think Maybe it's, I guess... Be like the wife or something? The, or the family, you know, let it go, and... They're coming back by the come back eventually, you know, or something. I don't know. Maybe it's like part of the message where like Tay said, you know, you let go, you explore the world for a little bit and then you come back. No, sure, eventually yeah. the family will come back. Because Margot also like left for a while and then came back. I mean everyone True. technically left for a while and came back, you know. True. Yeah. So maybe that's the significance. Everyone's doing it, so why not the bird? <laughs> I suppose. They're like, it's not true unless uh, a bird does it. <laughs> and here's my final thing. Was anyone uh, was anyone sad for Bill Murray that uh, that Margot was cheating on him and left no, him? No, I think he'll yeah. be better off. <laughs> I mean, it's still, yes, it's sad, but also I think he can do way much better. <laughs> He seems to be more focused on his work anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely felt for him, like, when he found out that... He felt uh, for you know, him? Mm. Yeah. Mm, Callus is a crush. <laughs> of course, it's Bill Murray. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you know, here, he definitely... He... Go ahead, go, go, ahead. Ahead. go ahead. No, no, you first. Well, I was going to say, this was a weird, like, foot movie. Uh, there was a lot of feet shots early on. <laughs> foot movie. And I was like, am I watching a... Um, Tarantino movie? A Tarantino, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. There's, like, so many shots with Mar like, Margot doing something with her feet. Oh, that's true. You're right. Okay, I do remember that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
like turning the TV on or off or unlocking the door. Yeah, she was. Yeah, it was a lot, a lot of feet. A lot of feet in this one. Wait, who else showed a lot of feet? I I just just a lot of feet in general. I don't know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Because right now I'm having a hard time thinking of who we else. You saw Richie's feet? Mm. You saw Royal's feet when he was in the hospital bed? <laughs> but the main, the main, like, the main focus of a lot of scenes was uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's feet <laughs> doing things. <laughs> like, there's a lot of, like, shots of feet. Well, maybe uh, Tarantino produced this. Yeah, maybe, maybe. maybe Wes Anderson <laughs> went through a phase. And that's just part of the contract was hey you gotta show feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's not like it's a main thing in his other movies. Like this is this is like the only one we've watched and I've watched that really focuses on feet. <laughs> At least there was no uh, bare ass shots. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so what's wrong with some bare ass shots? <laughs> <laughs> what are you a prude? <laughs> <laughs> What are you, a nun? <laughs> uh, I don't want none of that. Was there anything else you guys wanted to bring up? Um. Um. So, yeah, there was one little thing. Um. So we see in this, uh, in, you know, most Wes Anderson movies, there's always the models. And in this one... There, there were models, but like they were actually like model models. Like they weren't representations of what was going on in the movie. You just see like Mar. I think it was Margot. She had models. Yeah, you could say like the hamster. Yeah, the hamster stuff was kind of model ish, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I think this must have been where he just went. Yeah, I like models. <laughs> <laughs> like models are so hot. <laughs> yeah, I think him using the models later on is definitely. I mean, it's. It, I mean, obviously, it kind of bloomed with the Life Aquatic after this movie, but yeah, you know, that just that really became a part of his style. And I don't think the movie before this, the Rushmore movie, has any models in it. But um, yeah, you know, it's something that kind of grew with his style. Yeah, and a good style it was. It's fun to see the little models, especially like the one in the ten or not ten bombs, the um, Grand Budapest where they're off skiing. Yeah, that was a great were, scene, and we wouldn't have us. it. So, <laughs> alrighty, Kalos, do you want to start us off with our final thoughts and rating? Sure thing. Um, actually, one last thing. Um, this was uh, so we've watched many. Uh, many Wes Anderson movies. Uh, but uh, there's still some that I haven't seen, like I Love Dogs, um, Rushmore, or The Bottled Rocket, I think it's called. Like, what would you guys recommend that I also watch for, from Wes Anderson? Uh, if you liked Fantastic Mr. Fox, you should check out Isle of Dogs. Um, Rushmore is... Um, it's a good one. I mean, it's like his first feature length. Um, so that's it's definitely got its old mm. style to it. The Bottle Rocket movie, um, it's like a short, so it's not really that long, but it is worth checking out. I think it's it's, it's a little humorous and it's kind of early Owen and uh, Luke Wilson working together. Oh, then I've definitely got to check that out. <laughs> what about the Darjeeling Limited? Uh, I don't think I've seen that one, no. Mm. I mean, I can't That's his most recent one, this. isn't it? No, that that's one from came 2007. Out earlier. Oh, yeah. Okay. But it seems it seems interesting. All right, so I'll go ahead with my final thoughts. Um, so yeah, this this was probably like my uh, my third time watching this movie, and I've always thought it was like so weird and interesting. And like now that I have seen like many more Wes Anderson movies, uh, like it's just. It definitely clicks for me. Like I, I was able to enjoy it even more. Like his his weird, quirky style, and uh, overall, I really liked the story that he was telling here. Um, 
I really like the interactions between all the different characters, even like the ones that were that were unlikable. And uh, yeah, I thought it was a, a movie with the great acting, great story, uh, great cinematography, and all that. As uh, as I was understanding, was developing his weird, quirky style. This is a pretty good early one for him. And uh, yeah, overall, I would give it. Ooh, um, I would give it a four out of five. 4.5 out of 5. We'll go 4.5. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, better than the Life Aquatic. Um, still missing a few things that I would have liked to see in there, but I, I thought that the um, you know the acting was really good. Uh, I think the story was was well written. Um, I, I liked how uh, how the characters interact with each other in the different places that they end up in the movie. Um, I thought I, I felt like the most like cinematic part of the movie was when Richie was, you know, uh, trying to attempt to attempting suicide. I thought that was like the like standout scene in the movie. Um, just really well shot, very, very visceral uh, with the music playing and the camera angles and stuff like that. Um, and you don't really see that too much in Wes Anderson movies nowadays. So that's why it kind of like really sticks out to me personally. Um, and yeah, I think that the, uh, you know, the ending was a little bit rushed for me. Like I did like the climactic scene of the, the chase and all that, but then after that kind of just devolves into, and this is what happened a year later. And then it's kind of over. And I felt like maybe we could have had a better resolution there, but besides that's besides the point, um, enjoyable, really liked it. Uh, give it a four out of five. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the color, uh, scheming, the style, and the time frame that they use, and like the overall setting, uh, definitely fits the whole style of this family and how you know chaotic uh, family can be, and like the overall message about you know you leave and then people will come back sometimes, and you know just like the all being united by love, you know all that good message and the acting was good. Um, Owen Wilson, yeah, he was a little annoying in this movie, but, you know, he still acted good. He did a good job acting annoying, I guess. Um, but overall, this movie was a fun watch, uh, better than The Life Aquatic, so I'm going to give it a 4. Yeah, 4.5 out of 5. All right. Um, yeah, I agree with pretty much everything you're all saying. Um, it was a fun movie. Um, I think it's a... Topus is right where it's just they're all awful people, but you just kind of root for them. Uh, most of them. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the writing was good. The music, the cinematography, that was all great. Uh, acting was good. I didn't, if I didn't say that already, I may have said it twice. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> um, all in all, though, yeah, I, I liked it. Um, and I'll also give it a 4.5. All right. Wow, so Same Yemi's the odd one out. What did Yemi give it again? A four. four. <laughs> okay, well, of course, it's time for the fan recommended movie. And that is The Good, The Bad, The Weird, which was uh, recommended by Player 2 P2, who should be coming on the podcast next episode to talk about the movie with us uh this is from 2008 which was and it was directed by kim ji woon it's a korean like outlaw movie so it should be kind of interesting the synopsis is the story of three korean outlaws in 1930s manchuria and their dealings with the japanese army and chinese and russian bandits the good, a bounty hunter, the bad, a hitman, and the weird, a thief, battle the army and the bandits in a race to use the treasure map to uncover the riches of legend. Wow. Um, so there you go. That kind of yeah, sp- so. sums up how weird this movie's <laughs> probably going to be. I hope uh, this everyone was actually... knows um, I'm going to be c- directly comparing this to the good, the bad, and the ugly, just so everyone knows. Mm-hmm. All right, do it. <laughs> uh this is actually one of the first recommendations we ever got um from p2 wow so i believe this was like the second or third movie that was recommended to us so it's about time <laughs> <laughs> uh if you want to check this movie out you're going to need to either purchase it on amazon physically or digitally 
or you can use some sort of uh, IFC subscription on YouTube or Amazon to watch it uh, with, with those services. Um, it is a little bit hard to, to find if it's not physical. So, um, yeah, hopefully everyone can ch you know check this out. It seems like it's going to be a fun watch. And uh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce the Korean version of the name because I cannot read Korean uh, uh, letters. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else you guys want to mention before we end the show? Yeah, of course. Okay, what do you want to mention? Need to <laughs> clean your ass? Anything, yeah. anything besides that? <laughs> that's what we always say. Yeah, that's what we'll always say. Be sure to clean your ass. <laughs> All right. Well, I am Ben Stiller in a tracksuit, and I'm here with. The Royal Waffles. Tay Tenenbaum. And Tay's... What was it? I forgot. Tay's adopted birth. <laughs> Tay's adopted brother, <laughs> Callus Tenenbaum. <laughs> there you go. And this has been another episode of Film Freaks with a Z. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Peace.